It's time. No more precursors. No more prequels. No more build up. This is the end game. I'll see you in three hours. MJ Knight, out. Right, now on to the spoiler free review of Endgame. For a three hour movie, it doesn't feel like it's moving at three hours pace. Uh, the momentum and the plot keeps going to the point that you're never bored. Even when there's no action scenes and you just have scenes where characters are making these contemplations, it's moving at a rate whereby you're not left bored by it. The writing, I'd say, in all honesty, this is probably the strongest MCU movie script since the first Iron Man. That's a subjective point of view, and I accept that. But to me, the first Iron Man movie, in my honest opinion, is still the best MCU movie. That's subjective, I know. Doesn't make me right or wrong. It's just my preference. As for the acting... I cannot really think of anybody who turns in a poor performance. I think the ones who shine the brightest... Iron Man, for obvious reasons, because there is no MCU without Iron Man. I think for Chris Evans, I think this is his best performance as Captain America to date. Mark Ruffalo is given a lot more to do this time around. Brie Larson... I don't think she was given enough to do in this movie. As far as acting goes, I'd say she was alright. I don't think too much of her attitude off the set, but that's a subject for another time. But as Captain Marvel, she had a reasonable amount of decent dialogue and quips to come back at with, with people. And to be fair, folks, that's not really spoiler per se. That's just more like... More like just giving an observation. You know, she had decent material to work with. Score? Well, it's Alan Silvestri. You know, this is the same man that gave us the score for the Back to the Future trilogy. You know you're already going to get something spectacular for the budget that you're given. And considering the movie's budget is $356 million, and since this movie has opened up, it's already taken... 1.343 billion dollars worldwide, which it smashed the record set by Star Wars Episode 7 back in 2015 as the fastest movie to make it to a billion dollars. Although before that, it was Jurassic World. And I've seen both Jurassic World and The Force Awakens, and Jurassic World's the better movie. Opinion only. Visual effects... Well, for the three hundred and fifty six million that you that you get for this movie, visually it's their best one yet. So basically in summary it's the best MCU movie since the first Iron Man. The script, I'd say, it's very tight and keeps the the pacing fluid and consistent, like I said, even when there's no action scenes going on. You can see there's a lot going on in the background. And it doesn't leave you bored. So, yeah. 11 years since the first Iron Man movie. And we get the end game. We know that Spider-Man... Far From Home is coming this July, and that'll be it from the MCU for the next two years. 
What we're going to be get, be given with the next phase, I don't know. It's hard to say, but how they're going to top this, I don't know. I'll leave that up to the powers that be and the passage of time itself. But then again, back in 2008, did we honestly think we were going to be given an Avengers movie or two Iron Man sequels or even three Captain America movies? We, we had no idea what we were going to get given. So, yeah. That's it.